In today's episode, Alex and I do a Q&A with questions that you all have asked. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, you share this with a friend, and we'll catch you on the inside. All right, Alex, we are about three weeks post-diet. How are things going for you? What have you been up to? How have you been feeling? How's it looked? So the last three weeks have been crazy from a a life standpoint for us as we've cataloged a little bit through this Mm -hmm. podcast. Um, So with that being the case, nutrition and training have had to be kind of on autopilot with the other things going on. So training has been when I can get it in. And I haven't had set sessions as much as I would love to. I would much prefer to have things be perfectly programmed and to see progressions in those different factors. But training has been 30 to 40 minute sessions of when I can get in there. So it's been three or four sessions a week. And then nutrition has been extremely on autopilot where I've just had the same exact meals as what we were having before we left. And um, I've had some added calories to those depending on what my expenditure is that day. So if I have, um, a greater quantity of steps, or I'm running that day, or I go to um, my new running coach, which we can Mm -hmm. talk about at some point. Um, I'll have a little bit of extra calories in those instances. But for the most part, it's pretty much baseline until we get things more streamlined. And then I'll kind of dig into things, but I'm not rushing into it as the life things are and, and work are my two top priorities at the moment. Now, when we ended the diet phase, you had talked about being a little bit worn down from the diet and wanting to end. So with you saying that you're eating the same meals, I know you mentioned a few extra calories added in, but do you still feel fatigue from that or feel like you are needing to undulate anything else with also the inclusion of running? I think as we concluded the diet that I may have been a little under the weather slash just run down from all the things. Mm -hmm. So my fatigue more stemmed from that relative to the foods I was eating. I I felt well-fueled. I enjoy the foods that I'm eating. Nothing feels bland or gross to me, to put it simply. (laughs) So um, I, I don't feel overly run down at this moment, no. Now, great thing you mentioned running because there was another question about running here was asking about how you are incorporating it into your training sessions and how that's going. So we're doing a QA and a today. Yes, we are. Uh, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the first question? Someone asked about how you were fitting running in and how you were incorporating in it into your training. Very slowly. Um, And as prescribed by the individual that I am working with um, from her recommendation. So it's not anything crazy. Normally in these instances, I would throw myself in head first and be overly focused on running and getting amazing at it. But I'm just wanting to get my toes wet, figure out how to best run and have my form in a hundred percent position. This is why I sought out someone who is extremely knowledgeable and great in the space who I can work with in person for an hour, every couple of weeks to work on those mechanics and get me in the best position. Because I know that if I just jumped in myself, I'm very capable of just implementing running into my protocols. I know that I have not ran that consistently in a long time, nor have I ever really had distance running mechanics taught to me. All of my running was from sprinting in sports. And so I have a lot of sprinting that was taught to me, but not necessarily the mechanics of being able to run long distances. So learning. And then as I feel comfortable with my my running, um, I plan to implement it more. I don't have a goal at the immediate moment. Mm -hmm. My goal right now is to learn and to better understand and to better be able to go through the runs and understand the things that I did well and the things that I did not do well. And from there, once I have that figured out, then I can talk about distances. Then I can talk about frequency in which I'm running, but I need to understand what I'm doing first and foremost. And I think that this applies to everything. Mm -hmm. And, and as I've gotten into different forms of fitness, over this year within yoga and within the running, um, that has been the approach and I've really enjoyed it. And I know for myself, 
learning is the most important thing to me, like really understanding and grasping why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so having the the teaching and the education by someone who's so knowledgeable in the space helps me so much. I wanted to say how proud I was of you for the running and how you're going about it because you are someone, and we've talked about it here and there, that kind of just throws yourself into it. And you are someone who's competitive and very driven, and those are awesome qualities to have. But you can also get into the place where you go into overdrive and get into burnout and just push yourself when you don't necessarily need to. And you also did this with yoga when we first got started is you didn't at first commit to, I'm going to go this many times a week and I'm going to get this done. You first played around with, let me find the teachers and instructors that I like. Let me figure out what times based on the classes work into my schedule. And you took like two to three weeks to just try out classes, kind of understand the descriptions of the classes. And then you went in and you said, I'm going to make this commitment of two times a week so that you could get that consistency under your belt. Because now it is a consistent aspect in your life. And it doesn't always have to be two times a week. I know you prefer it to be that way, but that can slide based on these other aspects. And I think that's how it got to be a consistent in your schedule. And now you doing that with running makes me so happy because when you first started, you were like, I'm going to get out there and you're like sprinting miles or two. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I feel like I would just be beat up. And you in fact were beat up. So being able to see you get into it and learn, and I know you just have such a passion to learn and understand the human body and just what you're doing in general. That's kind of why everything within physique development is such the way that it is, is because both you and I want to understand why something is the way that it is. And I have annoyed you at nauseum with so many questions about anything and everything because I just want to know about how something works or why something does a certain way. So I'm just really proud of you for that. Absolutely. And thank you. (laughs) (laughs) And with the experience of being able to work with these different individuals, James is another, the uh, neuromuscular therapist that I I was working with. He was here at the house yesterday and we were chopping it up and nerding out about different (laughs) lunge variations and uh, femur positioning and (laughs) shin positioning as you go through the lunges, um, hinging, all that fun stuff. And being able to work with these individuals, it helps me with my clients and it allows for me to be more resourceful to them when they are experiencing different things within, maybe they want to incorporate running and and I can get them connected with Aaron or I can help at least guide them through the initial stages to get them to a place where they can implement it in whatever fashion that they can to the best of my knowledge, or I can outsource it to someone who I trust. And I know through my own experience, not just someone else saying that this person is good. Mm -hmm. I know that through my own experience that this person can take care of a client. And that is important to me. Yeah. And even just staying within your scope, I think that uh, when it was either Alex or Layla Hermosi had, I think it was Layla had noted on, talk about what you know. And if you always talk about what you know, you're not going to get into trouble because you're not trying to go outside your scope or just be everything to everyone. And there is a limit to people's knowledge. And I think that being able to outsource that, have those good connections, but then just being able to recognize that, hey, I can take this to someone else um, or I can even learn from someone else to get better so I can help down the road. Of course. I have a great question for you as well. Are you subscribed to the Physique Development YouTube channel? <laughs> I'm probably the longest subscription on the Physique Development YouTube channel. All of your emails, all subscribed? The only email that I watch YouTube on, yes. All right, because I wanted to let you guys know that when I told you last that less than 10% of you guys were subscribed, you guys started to subscribe and move that needle forward. So thank you to you guys. But then we got more people watching our channel, which is awesome. But now that subscription number, as far as the percentages, has gone down. So now only 7.9% of people that watch our channel are subscribed. So if you are watching, 
watching or listening to this right now, or you have stumbled across us some other way, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and always feel free to leave comments or to shoot us a message so that we can maybe answer it on a podcast, make a video for it. It is great feedback for us. And you guys actually love these Q&As a ton. And they're all questions submitted by you guys. And so we want to be able to get you those answers. So our inboxes are open. There's always a form below that you can put in any topics or questions that we are so happy to get to. I didn't get the opportunity to ask you about your experience following the diet. How is everything going? Things are in a pretty solid spot. I feel really good, and I'm glad that I we've both just been able to still show up for ourselves, especially with all of the crazy. There's been so many days where it just feels like so much is working against me, and it would be so easy to let things like training or my steps or my food fall through the cracks. And I would have a very valid excuse as to why things weren't up to par and I wasn't nailing everything down. But I'm so passionate about the fact of what my non-negotiables are for me to feel my best. And sometimes it can feel like I'm being ultra selfish in those moments. But sometimes I feel like you need to be because who else is going to look out for you except yourself? Like, yes, you have people that love you and support you in your life. But at the end of the day, you still have to look out for yourself and for your health. And so I've been very adamant about being able to get my training in any way that that looks. And actually, since we've gotten back, I've only done full body or like almost full body sessions where maybe one or two muscle groups aren't in there. But that's been what's worked for me, what's allowed me to go into the gym and to get movement. It's been something that mentally I can enjoy and it doesn't feel like overwhelming of I have to go in there and give my all to this leg session or something. I'm able to take a better approach that mental, physically, and that I'm not overriding my system because I know stress is higher than normal right now. And I need to be aware of that because there is only one stress bucket and it can only get so filled and something has to give. And so having a little bit shorter sessions and having them be full body has been what's allowed me to feel good, to move, to still pour into myself and still being really proactive with steps. And that's been something I've been so thankful that you are still so on top of your steps because we'll get to the end of the day and it's kind of like, what do you have left? What do you have left? And then we knock it out. And I was thinking last night specifically of I didn't get a ton of time with you throughout the day and we kind of were just running in opposite directions. And so then when it came time for the evening, I still needed to get like three, 4,000 steps in, but I didn't want to just leave you for 30 or 40 minutes and go on a walk by myself. I wanted to spend time with you. And it was so great to come in and for you to just be like, hey, I have about 3,000 steps, like let's go get them. And just being able to spend that quality time with you and still showing up for ourselves was really important. Um, And we've done a good job of reminding each other to get in our food and that we're eating enough and just just being there to support one another where you had a day where you were running errands and you're going to be away from the house and you knew for you to feel your best, you needed to get in a certain amount of meals while you're away from home. And you had just asked me of, hey, if your schedule's busy, I'll get it figured out, but I'm going to need to be gone and I need these meals taken care of. And just from that quick like exchange, we were able to help each other out and get everything set up where you could still show up and feel your best. So you weren't coming home after being gone for hours and absolutely starving and just understandably not being in the best mood if you were that hungry and hadn't eaten in that long. Um, So just little things like that. I'm really glad that we've been pushing forward um, as well as sleep of we've gotten to sleep the past few nights specifically of we've gotten up here and gotten to bed at a decent time. Uh, So things have been good. I've been feeling good in my body. Uh, My scale weights hovering around like 131 to 133. And I left for vacation around 130 to 132. So I'm in a great range. I feel good. And just continuing to show up in those instances, because honestly, it's when you need those the most. When it's a season of difficulty as we're in right this moment, the accountability is such a large piece. So I'm very glad that we've been able to provide that for one another. Yeah.
Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Let's go ahead and take it back quite some time to when you first started off as an online personal trainer or in-person personal trainer. What's a funny story from back then? Give, <laughs> give me some deets on just something funny you remember from starting off. Um, <clears throat> the very first training program that we worked very hard on um, and put out to our very, very small audience at the time that first program we sold zero <laughs> absolutely crickets like the program that we had sat i mean we worked on for far too long i don't remember how long but there was a lot of effort and emotion that went into that program and i was so excited about it and felt so passionate about it um and to release it and no one purchase was such an experience. Um, so that would be like my first absolute fail from a marketing standpoint. But in hindsight, I have made such greater products <laughs> in, in, you know, in the future. And uh, people have purchased those significantly more. It's pretty easy to buy significantly more than zero, but that's the case. <laughs> what did you do after that got zero buys whatsoever? Did you just uh, act like it never happened and just move on? Or what did that, when When was the next time you even put out a product? I was pretty hurt about that. Um, I, I do remember just being bamboozled because we, at the time, I thought I had like maybe 15 to 20 people who I was certain were going to purchase. And then none of those people showed up for me um, or came through after saying that they wanted it, X, Y, and mm -hmm. Z. So um, in that, I was probably pouted for longer than what I'm remembering. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give it, let's say a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, tried to figure out why people didn't purchase it. And so then what I did to even start coaching was that I started to sell $20 training programs to anyone on Facebook. So I would just direct message people. And that's how I started with coaching. And so then I just went back to that with the program that I already wrote. And so then I just went direct co to consumer again and was like, hey, I just wrote this. Um, I'm selling it for $20. Would you be interested in purchasing? So then I ended up selling a decent bit of them for me at that time going that route, whether I guilted people into it because I reached <laughs> out to them directly or they were actually interested. They just didn't see the post or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was how I went about it. And then I, I – repaired my ego, licked my wounds, and continued to to post to get clients in, in other ways, I suppose. I had a very similar experience for the first uh, program I put out. And it was so bamboozling because I remember I had a friend and she did have a little bit larger following than me at the time. But I thought that we had like comparable interest to what we were talking about. And she had released a program and she had been like, I made $6,000 in one day. And I, my mind was blown. <laughs> and that was like my standard. I was like, oh my gosh, she made $6,000. Like I'm probably not going to make $6,000, but I could probably do like $3,000. And I'm getting so excited. I felt like I had posted about it so much and I had worked so long on it. I actually had like you review it because I just wanted it to be perfect. And I put it out and six people bought it. And my mom was one of them, <laughs> like including my mom. And I was just so disappointed that I think I posted about it maybe one or two more times, but I felt so mortified that just like that was such a flop that I, I just kind of tried to erase it from my memory, honestly. In hindsight, I should have just kept posting about it. Yeah. I should have just kept posting my, tr like me training and then just had it as a link all the time. Mm -hmm. I should have done that. But I think that because I was so thrown off when I first released it. Now, when I released it, I don't think that I did any marketing beforehand. I think mm -hmm. I just was like, I'm working on this and told people that I was talking to in person, mm -hmm. but no one on social probably knew that it was coming out. And then I just posted it one evening 
and nothing, you know? So if I told people more beforehand, if I were to let people know and then continue to let people know, because it's not like every single post people are going to see, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, we know that now, but at that time I thought everyone saw everything yeah. because of my audience being smaller. I felt like I was engaging so much with every person that I was, you know, um, in conversation with. And so, yeah, learning experience. Though. <laughs> I definitely, I, I still have to give myself the advice of still posting about things or posting about things more than once because I don't want to be annoying, so to say, of just posting about something all the time and people just like click on my story or click on my page and I'm like, oh, this again. Mm -hmm. But I also am so aware that not everyone sees my stuff. And even people that I know interact with me and follow me more closely, I'll mention something and they'll be like, oh, no, I didn't see that. And in my head, I'm thinking I put it out there or I've been working on it and thinking about it so much that I feel like I've been talking about it so much that people are irritated with me. So then I just don't post about things enough. Another mistake, or I guess, I don't know if this is even funny. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Another mistake that I made starting out was that I would bend over backwards for every single client. Like there at the beginning, I would say that there was two clients that I was paying for their groceries. Yeah. um, Which was, don't do that as much <laughs> as, as you coach. can care about, you can care about the client, but you do not need to pick up their bills. Yeah. Um, and I, I did that. I, I can think of two clients right off the top of my head that I did that for. Um, and it was, it was literally like, especially at that point, I was painfully passionate and I'm very fortunate to be almost 10 years later now, mm-hmm. just as passionate, if not more. Yeah. And I was just so passionate and I wanted to help people so badly that I was like, any issue that you're having, I'm going to fix it. Mm-hmm. So if if it is a matter of you being able to get the best groceries or getting what you need from a food standpoint, I will help you. And that was a mistake. Or them wanting to pay whatever they wanted to of like, it doesn't matter. I want to help you. I know I can help you. Yeah, You can pay whatever you want. I'm here. And so that was, you know, a a mistake in and of itself. And I also remember the first time I didn't do calls when people were signing up at that time. It was just through email. And I do not miss that period of my life whatsoever when I was just constantly typing emails. Mm -hmm. It's not like I had this massive flux of clients, but also just typing emails sucks. (laughs) So um, I remember the first time that I sent the uh, here's the pricing and then the person actually signed up. And I remember having an absolute party in my um, apartment, my college apartment, because I was so excited. Mm-hmm. I was because I I had given that information to other people and they'd be like too expensive. And I want to say it was like at the absolute most. And I was like, man, I feel like what I'm providing is more, I'm, I am cutting myself short. And then these people want to cut me even shorter on it. I can't, I I literally can't do that. Um, and when that first person signed up, I remember having a massive, I probably cried. It was a very emotional period of my life and it just proved to myself that I could do it. Yeah. And, and then once I had that one individual, like believe in me enough, it was kind of just off to the races from there. I started to believe in myself more because finally one person was like, it's worth the money. And then it's just like, then it just kind of steamrolled. I, vividly remember the first client that I ever signed on and I was in my old Jeep and I was uh, having the call outside of my parents' old house in the Jeep. And it actually is a client that's currently on my roster. So she worked with me for a few years um, back then. And then she like went off on her own and she came back um, and also is pregnant right now. And we're working together. And that's actually who I was FaceTiming on the patio the other day. Um, We were catching up on something. So I vividly remember Remember, like trying to remember everything. And I had like a note of the things I had to say because I hadn't memorized it yet. And just like wanting to make the sale so bad and knowing that I could help her. And then exactly that of I was just like, oh my gosh, I made my first sale. Yeah. And it was so exciting. I remember a lot of like my first calls and what that experience was because it was just like, oh my gosh, this person believes in me or this person also knows that I can help them. And now I get to do that. And it was such a cool feeling still is to this day. But I vividly remember like 
being in my car and it's so hot because I turned the car off and I'm like trying to s- close oh. this before I go inside. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of of sales calls that I've taken in a air conditioning conditioning less car, <laughs> just sweating and oh, being yeah? like, I want to give you all this information, but I am dying in this car. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many different stories from a you know starting out and a lot of the most common mistakes we certainly made them. Uh, another one that comes to mind is starting from absolute scratch for every client, like mm-hmm. not having any systems or templates to work off yeah. of. I was like, the client is going to know that if I have any, if there's any similarities between any of these, which I was typing the same things, yeah. but in my mind, it was like, I know in my heart, I started from complete scratch <laughs> and wasted my personal time yes. <laughs> to like give them this 1000% personalized experience where you can certainly use a template to work your way of like, these are the base things that I know I'm going to need. And then we can work into more individuality and it still is custom. It still is personalized. Um, but at that time I was like, it has to start from blank document <laughs> and we go. When we go. And Absolutely uh, nothing. it was brutal. <laughs> I would say one of the biggest things was I would say I was available 24-7 and everyone had my phone number and it was just if you needed anything at all, you could text me and it was people would call or text at any time and I do not miss that portion at all. Yeah, the the emotional side of of coaching at the beginning because you're just investing. You mm-hmm. haven't you're so fresh that you have not had any experience where people have burned you. And I've been very fortunate in my life to have a lot of loyalty. Like I've just had a lot of really good people in my life that I have been able to have friendships with for a very long time. And especially at that point, I'm I'm not sure that I've had a a real bad fallout with anyone. So I'm like, I just pour in, pour in, pour in. Um, and it it can uh, startle you pretty quick because that's not everyone else's experience. And, and loyalty is not something that every person is prioritizing. And to get burned that first time is a weird experience. It's, it's far too emotional for what it should be until you get kind of to this this window of like, okay, there's some give and take. I can still pour in and and still care. um, But I also have to have some boundaries here to allow for myself to function properly and this not take away my, you know, my happiness for the day. Like I have to be able to navigate for my day and not take away from my time with you, my time with the dogs, my time with my family, my friends, because work didn't go exactly how it needed to. Like I need to be able to separate that. And at that time, and really, I mean, up until the last two years, and not to say that now I don't have days where it's like, man, work sucked it out of me Mm -hmm. and I've just gotta be like by myself. That still happens, but significantly less. I would say that it was happening very regularly at that time, whereas now it's selective and and that's by design because I've just learned how to control my emotions and, um better place my boundaries so much better. So with that, what would be your tip for someone starting off as a personal trainer? Give yourself grace. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't think that I gave myself any grace. And I thought that, um, you know, everything that I did, everyone was just taking a a microscope and, and analyzing every word that I said, every, um, every, everything that I was suggesting, everyone was just picking apart. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. Like anyone who is maybe you're looking up to that is a good person is going to not like belittle you. I think that that's huge. I, I, I thought that everyone that I looked up to, and if I screwed up, they were going to belittle me. And I think that if I would have done things differently, I would have reached out to more of those people of like, yo, you are an inspiration to me. You have driven me to pursue this. Like you have allowed for me to believe in myself more because you've done it. And I wish I would have shared that with them at that time. But in my mind, I was like, I don't want to look like an idiot. I don't want to embarrass myself. And so I would encourage you if you're a first time coach, talk to people, Mm -hmm. reach out, have conversation, be willing to be wrong and learn and try not to, because I I think that in those first times you want to come across as someone who knows, like you want to come across as like, I do know what's going on. And that can 
like stunt your growth as a coach where it's like, I know what I know, but I know there's so much more for me to learn. And there, by learning so much more, I can have better results with my clients. I can take better care of my clients. I can provide a much better service. And I just need to invest and be okay with being uncomfortable. Because if you just try to stay like, I'm going to stay in the shadows here and I don't want anyone to think less of me, but I also want people to think highly of me. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's not how things work. (laughs) It's just not how it works, no matter how badly you want that to be the case. Because if you just stay in the shadows and you don't ask questions and you try to be right all the time, you're going, there's a ceiling to what you're ability is going to be like, you're going to have to, at some point, turn the corner and start to have conversations and, and get outside of your comfort zone. You might as well start that from day one. There's no reason to stunt that experience because you're fearful. So. Yeah. And if you're, if you're going for it, freaking go for it. Like I, there's, I, I definitely feel like I went as all in as I could in the time that I started for, I mean, I basically just was like, leap, let's freaking go. Uh, but truly that's what I feel like has been such a big part. And we've talked about it of that self-belief when there's things that are maybe, and especially within, um, I know times are changing, but it's not a conventional job. You're trying to figure things out. It's more conventional now. Yeah. It, that's what I'm saying. Times yeah. are changing, but really being able to just go after it. Don't be, like you said, don't be so shy of, I can't talk about my company or talk about this. I say it all the time. I'm physique development's number one freaking fan. And I am all always selling physique development or talking about physique development because I believe in the brand. I believe in the product. And if you aren't writing hard for your brand or for you, why would anyone else do that? And I think that truly just believing and having this like constant feeling of it's going to happen or I'm going to make it happen is what's continued to move it all forward. Uh, But one of the other tips I would say and something that I personally did that I'm so, so glad I did was I've always had a coach and or mentor to help me. And that goes exactly in line with what you were just talking about of not being afraid to be wrong or to ask questions, because I think that that's something that's really been able to grow a respect between clients when I tell them, I don't know the answer to that, but I'll find out of I'm going to go talk to a mentor or I'm going to reach out to someone or I might have to refer you to someone else, but I'm not trying to be outside of my lane or tell you I can do it, but I can't or just kind of give up on it. I'm learning, I'm evolving, and I'm growing from this situation. So each time that there's been something with a client that I can't figure out, it's It's not just, okay, that client can't lose weight. It's how do I get to the bottom of this? Do I need to ask for help? Do I need to call someone in? But it just also still allowed me to focus on my own journey too and not get so clouded with everything because you are showing up and it it, it can be emotionally like exhausting or draining to show up for people so hard. And especially within fitness of if you're writing people's programs or helping with food, but when the time it gets to the end of the day, it's like, I don't want to write my own program. I don't know what my own macro should be. And it's nice to just have someone else that's doing your fitness so you can keep focusing and keep showing up for yourself and keep learning and growing. Well, it also gives you the opportunity to have the experience in which some of the things that your clients may be challenged with in working with you. Like you may see things in your experience working with a coach of like, oh, I don't like how this this aspect functions. I'm going to do better in my service or I like how this works. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have my own version of how this works. And so it just allows for you to continue to expand your horizons within your own service. And, and and for us, I mean, we have a lot of mentorship going on right now. We have we have leadership, we have systems within the business that we're working on. We have sales that we are having mentorship within. Uh, we have we have gut health and hormonal function mentorship going on right now. I have the the running coach at this moment as well as my own fitness coaching mm-hmm. that I have and and so it's it's a lot of Like I am just in this constant state of, I want to be around people who 
are passionate about the thing that they're teaching on. I also want to be around people who know more than myself. I do not want to be the person who is just providing all the knowledge for the people around me because at that there there's a ceiling, a hard ceiling to that. And that's going to be a rude awakening for you to experience if you just want to be the smartest person, the best person in the room or in the conversations that you're having. And so by being around people in that, it, it, it's one, a humbling experience, but it also, it opens up your mind of like, oh my gosh, there's just so much more that I can learn. And some individuals will find themselves in a place of like, that is scary. And that makes me want to run the opposite direction. <laughs> and you should flip that because I think that at points in my life, I felt that way because I did not want to be looked at as lesser than. And it's not a matter of people looking at you as lesser than. It's like, oh my gosh, I get to teach this person about the thing that I love the most. Like, I am so excited for this experience. I don't think less of that person. I'm just excited I get to share my passion with them. And so when you flip that mindset, it's such a cool experience because then you're just like, oh my gosh, I... I crave to be outside of my comfort zone. And this is a statement that we have made on this podcast, I wanna say hundreds of times, but you get to a point where you just wanna be outside of that comfort zone because you see the growth, you've experienced the growth that comes with that, and it's awesome. I wanted to talk about that as well, was the aspect of having hard conversations or getting outside of your comfort zone and how a lot of times people don't want to do that. It's very uncomfortable. But once you've done it so many times, you do begin to crave it because you know what growth happens in those areas. And it's obviously like a common phrase or cliche of growth happens outside of your comfort zone. But it's there's a reason that people say it all the time is because that's what I've experienced. And any time that I have faced something hard, of course, there's periods where I feel sorry for myself or I complain about it or whatever it may be. But then it's like, what can I learn from this? What can I grow from this? How am I going to get better from this? Because for every situation, you have two options. Am I going to let this make me better or am I going to let this make me worse? And I always want to get better. And not only being in an environment of people that want to get better or so passionate about their craft that it pushes you in that direction, but just for what I want as a person of, again, every hard thing that I've experienced has allowed me to learn more about myself, get more in tune with where I fell, fell short, where possibly someone else fell short, why they fell short, how I can get become a better communicator. All of those things have allowed me to level up in those instances. So in that discomfort, like I want to lean into it because if that's going to come with some leveling up, that's what I want as well. And I don't think that anyone is like innately good at approaching uncomfortable conversations. I think that through experience, you get better at it. But I don't know if at any point you're like, I'm so excited <laughs> to have this really uncomfortable conversation. <laughs> like I, I can want to have it to have the relief I know I'm going to have at the conclusion of it. Um, but I don't know if you ever just go into it of, man, I'm looking forward to this one today. I think you just have to get better about not putting it off. I think that's the thing for me, because when you put it off, the narrative in your mind just continues to expand. And you're just like creating this false story day after day. Uh, if like if you're if it's with you know it's with someone else obviously, and you maybe not communicating with them in that time frame, you're just like creating this narrative, and it's so silly. And then once you have the conversation, you're like, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so the, the earlier you can nip those conversations in the butt, the better off that you are. Yeah, and it's the aspect also of. The things that you want to accomplish, you're not always going to enjoy doing, or the things that you are wanting the outcome, you might not enjoy the task as much. Sure. And we've talked about that in the sense of, let's say, maybe I don't want to wash my face every night, or when it is far too late and I am going to bed at 11 p.m. and I have to wash all my makeup off, I don't want to wash my makeup off, but I want the end result of having nice skin and my skin being in the best spot. So I don't want to have a ton of uncomfortable conversations or I don't want to be in 
discomfort and pain, but I do want what's on the other side of it. And so sometimes you have to go through that to get what you want. And I think that's what I stay focused on is that's where I want to go. So everything else doesn't matter because if I'm trying to get to that end goal, then that's what matters most, not everything I might have to wade through in the meantime. It is summertime. And with summer comes vacations and needing to look like a smoke show at the beach. And that is probably you and wanting to get in the best shape of your life. With Physique Development, our one-on-one -on -one coaching is going to do that for you. So head over to physiquedevelopment.com and inquire to work with one of our coaches. What does a typical workday look like for you? Currently, my routine is that I'm waking up at 5, 30, or 6, depending on what time I go to bed. And... With that, I'm getting to work about 30 minutes following that time frame. So I get right into check-ins or whatever the, the task is for that particular day. On Mondays, it may be a little bit different as check-ins start to roll in. I may do a little bit of, of content planning or whatever the situation may be. I I'm at my desk for about two hours, which leads me to a place that's shortly before we go into breakfast. So then I may go on a walk before we have breakfast. And then I will get right back into check-ins following breakfast. And then I'm doing check-ins for probably two hours again there. And then we may go into some meetings or on days that we do not have meetings, I'm going into my training generally at that time. So then that puts me at 1130 noonish. And that's like a one and a half to two hour process with me having uh, my workout, my cardio following the workout, my post-workout meal, shower, and then back into work. So then we're getting to about 233 back to my desk and I'm doing check-ins and emails for another two hour block. And so um, that takes me to or I guess that, what where are we at now? 4.30? Around there, yeah. Generally, that's the cap for how long I can do check-ins and emails. About six to six and a half hours daily is kind of the end range for me until I start to just my, my quality in my mind. And clients are like, I don't feel that way. I'm like, no, I feel that way. <laughs> um, I feel like my quality is not at the same tier. And so I call it there. And then I start to do different things with um, speaking with the staff or working on content stuff and uh, those different factors for the last few hours. And I lately have done a really good job of capping my day off around um, 6.30-ish. Mm-hmm. And then going on a walk with you and being done at like being done with all the things around seven, we have our final meal and then um, heading up to bed around 9, 15, 9, 30. And then we run it again. Run it back. Run it back. <laughs> what does your work day look like? Uh, each day feel like it differs. Yours but... differs significantly more than mine. Yes. Mine is pretty much streamlined Monday through Friday. Yes. I have a few more meetings and touch points with people. And so I would say that a lot of days look similar, like Mondays look similar to Mondays, but it's not like each day looks similar to one another. So since you gave a Monday example, I'll go ahead and give that. Uh, I normally get up around 5, 5.30 and I'm getting straight into work. And then I am spending about an hour and a half to two hours at my computer before I take the dogs for W at 7.30ish. And then once I get back from that, I start making breakfast and I watch a show or something on my iPad. So this morning it was Bachelorette because it is Tuesday. So I'm always watching The Bachelor, Bachelorette, which BIP starts soon. I'm so excited. Oh, <laughs> on, a, on a nickname basis with the... Oh, Bachelor in Paradise, faux show. Okay. That's the best of The Bachelor shows. So after then we eat breakfast together and then we both go back to work and I'll normally be at my computer um, for an hour or so, depending on if breakfast was a little bit variance of time there. Um, we get into a few different meetings. So you, me, Miguel, Tiffany, we have a planning meeting. I go into a sales meeting. And then like this past Monday, I also had a mentorship meeting after that. And then um, I normally don't train on Mondays because of the meeting and possibly an appointment on Mondays. So uh, with that, I had an appointment yesterday. So I just had some desk work, left for the appointment, ran some errands, came home, um, and ended up going on the walk and finishing up 
our evening the same way. So it, it changes day to day. There is, uh, I like to have uh, at least four hours at my desk of like me just doing my work. Uh, but then there's also the meetings or if there is like specific work I have to do for something else um, to be done during those time frames. But that's what it looks like. Yeah, any any mentorship stuff, those meetings are generally at like five o'clock for me. So those are normally an hour to an hour and a half, depending on whatever the topic is or panels that are being reviewed or whatever we're nerding out on that particular day. Yeah, I think that it's been uh, fun to be able to have meetings together and just being able to uh, understand how we need to communicate in those. And we've just become, I feel, especially over the past few weeks, been able to have better meetings and better communication through that uh, and just balancing our days that we can still show up for each other at the end of the day. Because I know that there's definitely times where we feel very worn down and we can kind of come into the evening dragging a little bit. So it's been nice to be able to get that balance figured out. I think something powerful is having days that are completely blocked in which I don't have appointments. Like it's just not a day that I allow for myself to take any appointments. So Mondays and Tuesdays are generally the days that I don't take any appointments. Wednesdays and Fridays are the two days that I will go out and have appointments. If there are any appointments generally on those other days, I'll have them come here to the house. Um, now today is a instance in which is a little different because my barber who I love dearly and have been getting my haircut every two weeks by him for two years now, I have been encouraging him because he's wanted to go off and uh, start his own shop. Like he, he's wanted to have his own shop for quite some time. Um, and unbeknownst to me, really not even unbeknownst to me, about two days before he decided that he was going to do this fully, he lets me know. But then there was also a a clause in his contract that he had signed, whatever, eight years ago, that uh, he had a non-compete for a short period of time. So he couldn't cut hair, I think, for like three weeks. So I'm out. I, I just screwed myself. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is the longest my hair, my beard have been for the podcast in a very long time. I know you guys were all thinking that the whole well, time you were watching Well, I was thinking that. I, yeah. Um, and so I finally get to see him today, which I'm very excited to see his new s little studio area. And I'm very proud of him for taking the plunge. And yesterday was the first day that he started to take um, clients over there. I think he had a full book, so I was really happy for him there. He's going to have a full book all the time because he's awesome, and uh, I'm really proud of him. Yeah, I know you're very, very excited for that appointment. Yeah, trust. <laughs> All right. We've had some great questions today, but the last one I'll leave you with today is, is PDTC even still a thing? It is still a thing. We haven't talked about it a whole lot. No, we there's have been, <laughs> There's been some changes within physique development over the last year. If you guys have not been able to tell, you can browse around the stuff and there's some different things going on. So that is one of the things that is getting a reprioritization, getting a facelift, getting a little bit of love from yours truly here uh, that will be coming sooner rather than later. All the individuals who are utilizing it right now, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We're going to continue to bring you. It's a great product as is. So if you're interested in a um, much cheaper product than what our one-on-one -on -one service is, but you still want physique development programming, it is an excellent product. Mm -hmm. What I'm speaking to is that we're just going to take it up a notch. We're going to take it up another level. And I'm really excited for that um, as that product will be even better in the near future as we continue to get everything into place. And uh, one thing that I've had to continue to re reiterate to myself is there's only so much time in the day as I have so many things in this head oh, yeah. that I want to do, that I can do, that I'm capable of doing, but I only have so much time. And so I have to take it day by day, give everything I have to each day and be able to lay my head on that pillow and say, you know what? I did everything I could today. I'll get to what I can tomorrow. And we're just going to keep repeating uh, the process. So it's coming. And uh, I'm excited for it uh, to be back and, and be a, not be back, but um, 
just be a, a bigger part of what physique development is. Yeah. And again, there's still people that are in it. You can sign up right now. It's $35 a month and you will fill out an assessment and we will send over training. It has videos. It also has where you can plug in your weight and it has a timer in there. It has everything that you could want in a fitness app. And then uh, you'll take an assessment after you finish it and be assigned a new program. So you can just get new training and be on that subscription and it's stellar. But we're going to always work to improve anything that we do because quality. Am I right? Well, I'll say if, if you're listening to at this point in the podcast, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek. Oh, share some secrets with you guys. Is that OK? Yeah. I OK. So what will will be coming is that I have my best glute program that I have ever written. Ooh, big it will words. it will it will be on the app for purchase by itself. And I don't think I know actually that there is not a 12 week program that you will be able to add as much glute tissue as you will in that program. I have wow. these one, are some big claims, guys. Bro, look at my results. I'm, I'm, I've, 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 I'm tried and true. Hey, okay? I'm not saying they're true claims, I'm just saying they're big claims. I'm just saying that my track record follows what I'm saying. Oh, for sure. And I have had in the trenches experience to be able to create this program to make it the best ever. And I am so excited to present it to the public. So if you're listening I, at this point in the podcast, you just got a treat. Yeah. <laughs> Get excited. <laughs> well, you know what? Just you're the best if you're still listening to the exactly. podcast right now. Make sure you share this with a friend and thanks for joining us. If you have any other questions, then leave them below, like I've said, and we'll get to them, but we'll catch you in the next one, guys.